can't read what I wrote. <laughs> I seriously um, can't read this. Okay. In this video, we're just gonna have a little chat. We're gonna have a little talk. We're going to talk about giving up and the fact that most of the time when you say you want something, you actually give up too soon. We're in a new year now. Lots of people are making resolutions. They're looking at their goals. They're trying to be more productive. They're seeing what they need to do in order to accomplish these things that they want in their lives. You know, a lot of times I work out, so people are interested in fitness goals. That's like one of those big things every year. People say, hey, but I don't have enough time. This year, it's going to be different. I watch them come into the gym, you know, and they'll be there that first month and then they'll start to drop off. The reason they are not seeing the results that they want to see is because they give up too soon. By February, March, a lot of those people who started coming in January are gone and they don't even come back. How are you supposed to ever see the benefit of the work if you won't commit to doing the work? The same thing works for other goals that you might have. I see people sometimes say that they want something and they start, literally they start, they start doing the things that need to get done, but then they aren't seeing the outcomes early enough. Let's just say this, you know, we're in this world now where we expect things to happen instantaneously, right? It used to be that we would send an email and we'd expect people to respond, you know, quickly. Now <laughs> we're surprised if they respond at all. Instead, we've resorted to text messages and instant messaging. Now we expect people to respond to those instantaneously. So we're in this world where we're constantly getting what we want back. We're having that validation come back to us almost immediately. We're having our questions answered right there on the spot. So when it comes time for us to really have to work on something where it is going to take not days, not hours, not minutes, not even weeks, it's going to take a month. So you're looking at month after month after month after month. And in some cases, years before you see results. Yet most of us give up way before we ever are able to reap the benefits of the work that we put in. Sometimes we want to do the work and things just get in the way. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who aren't willing to put in the struggle. They think it's going to be easy. Like I'm going to jump on this next bandwagon. I'm going to do that too without fully understanding that the person who you may be modeling your desires after, they may have been putting in the work for years. I've actually been at my gym for hmm, <laughs> 19, oh my gosh, wait, is it 19 years? I'll do the math and stick it in here. When people say, well, Sheila, how do you stay in shape? It is consistency. People want to show up every once in a while. Like, I don't know, I guess they're used to that. <laughs> but that is not what gets you results. You have to be willing to show up all the time. You have to be willing to do the work all the time. You have to be willing to put forth the effort on a consistent basis. So if you're having a problem thinking that you're not going to be put, able to put it in for the long haul because you're just not committed to it taking months and years for you, you're not gonna be successful. If you only want to show up sporadically when it's convenient for you, when you're like, oh, okay, I'll do that now because I don't have anything else to do, you're not going to see the benefit either. You're not going to reach those goals because you're just showing up every once in a while when you feel like it. You aren't really being consistent. Yet we will sit around and say, this is what I want. I'm working so hard on it. And then you say, oh, well, when was the last time you did it? Well, it's been a couple of weeks. How committed are you truly if you aren't willing to make some sacrifices to make it happen. I've worked with plenty of people that even I have been amazed at their consistency and their discipline. I'm just like, okay, that person's really disciplined. <laughs> makes me feel uh, not necessarily bad, but makes me feel like I haven't upped my game enough. One of the things you wanna think about is who you're surrounding yourself with. 
Are you surrounding yourself with people who are okay with mediocrity? People who just want to get by? People who just want to do enough? If that's your frame of reference, then anytime you do a little bit more, you're going to feel successful. You're going to feel good because you've set your bar low for yourself. You've set your standard low for yourself. You have to start asking yourself, when am I going to have enough pride in myself that I'm willing to set my standards higher for myself? I'm willing to say, you know what? Mediocrity isn't good enough. Showing up every once in a while isn't good enough. If I really want to commit to my health and fitness this year, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to show up on a more consistent basis. I'm not saying that you have to do this every day. What I'm saying is you need to take a look at your lifestyle and what you claim to want. Ask yourself if your effort is matching <laughs> what you actually need to do in order to achieve it. Most of the time when we aren't achieving something, it's because our effort really isn't there. Again, I feel like I need to make this disclaimer here all the time. I'm not talking about people who have other responsibilities going on and challenges that are truly legitimate that actually are keeping them from being at a higher level of productivity than they would like to be. I'm talking about the people who do a lot of talk, but don't do a lot of walk. Those are the people that I'm talking about. Look at your circle, look at your network. Who are you flying with? That whole sort of concept about birds of a feather flock together. If everybody that you're surrounding yourself with is comfortable with mediocrity or comfortable with not having high standards for themselves, then you're going to feel okay with that. You're going to feel like, oh, okay, I'm doing well. Like, I haven't truly messed up in my life, so I must be okay. Yet, there are all of these things and possibilities, opportunities, goals that you have for yourself, things you claim to want, but you've positioned yourself in a way that you will probably never reach them. Let's just be honest, you won't. Because you aren't doing the work that's necessary, you're going to give up. You're going to come up with all sorts of reasons and excuses why you can't do something. And I will give you a personal example. <laughs> I actually was in um, a virtual meeting one time there were a number of people talking about some of the challenges that they were facing. And I mentioned one of the challenges that I had. And the person was just like, Sheila, you know, if you really want to do that, you can do it this way. The only reason you haven't done it is because you think you can only do it this way. And because you can't do it that one way that you want to do it, you're saying you can't do it when that's not true. I had put myself in a box. <laughs> I, I you know, don't like it when other people will put me in boxes, but I had put myself in a box about the things that I wanted to do. And I was basically making an excuse about why I couldn't do it. There were lots of changes that I could make in my life. Actually, I didn't even have to make a whole lot. I could make a couple of changes and do the very thing that I wanted to do. I just needed to do it in a different way if I still wanted to accomplish that goal. There are so many pathways. Let's talk about that because because that's where I really messed up with that. If you say you want to lose weight, you could say, well, I can't afford a gym membership. Therefore, I'm never going to be able to get into the gym and lose weight. So that was sort of my line of thinking. And it wasn't about being healthy or losing weight. It was entirely about something else. But I had framed it as this one pathway. This was the only pathway I could take to get there. When we all know in this particular example, you don't have to have a gym membership to lose weight and get in shape. You can go outside and go for a walk. You can do activities in your house. You can put on a YouTube video and start moving to some of those. There are tons of those out there. When you say that there's only that one pathway, that's a limitation that you're putting on yourself. When you start that and you give up because you can't do it the way you want to do it, that's you quitting. That's you finding a reason why you can't keep going. And then even worse, even worse, you try to blame it on something else. That's us. 
I can't do it because this person said this, this person did that. I don't have this. No, you didn't do it because you just weren't committed. If you couldn't do it the way you wanted to do it, you were just going to come up with a reason why. And you're just having an excuse and you're not being accountable. So going forward in this year, one of the things that we're going to try to do, one of the things that I'm going to try to do is to come up with more reasons why I can do something, how I can do something and not stop doing something just because or not do something just because the format isn't the format that I want. I need to expand and stretch my assets and skills anyway. If there's something that you want to do that you quit on last year, put it in the comments. Let me know what you quit on. What did you quit on? Because here's the thing. It may be, oh, you know, I wanted to stop smoking, but I, I quit and didn't make it through that program. Or I started a new exercise program, Shayla. I quit on that too. Really and truly, every time you do that, you're quitting on yourself. I know that, you know that. We're quitting on ourselves. We're quitting on the promises that we make to ourselves. This year, we're gonna do something a little different. We are not quitting on ourselves. If we need to, we're gonna tweak. Maybe we take a break, but we have a plan for coming back. If it's something we don't feel comfortable with, then we learn ways to increase our comfort level as we grow in whatever that process is. Because here's the thing, if you're not challenging yourself, if you're not stretching yourself, your skills, your talents, if you're not pushing those forward a little bit and you aren't learning, you aren't progressing as a person, I'm not sure I wanna be around people who just wanna be the same old person that they've been their whole lives. Mm, that doesn't sound fun at all. It sounds absolutely boring. There's no way I'd wanna do that. For me personally, I want to like be the best person I can be. And each year I want to be moving in that direction and not staying in the same spot. So yes, I'm going to be pushing myself to challenge myself to do other things and to do things that aren't necessarily comfortable for me to do. As a matter of fact, I already do this because I'm an introvert. And the fact that I show up at the gym in an environment that's great for extroverts but sucks for me <laughs> like that is a stretch right there but I do it all the time I've gotten accustomed to that I've had plenty of gym memberships and I've had this particular one for a very long time so yes I have stretched in order to be able to go into the gym and work out because my goal is bigger than that uncomfortable space that I was in so challenge yourself, don't quit, stick with it, find ways to make it through. If you aren't sticking with it, find out why, what is keeping you from sticking with that? Were you truly committed to begin with? If you're quitting, that's why you're not seeing the results that you wanna see. If you're quitting, that's why you're not reaching your goals. Every time you stop, you then have to start back over again when you figure out, yeah, I am interested in that. So stay in through the challenges, through the hard times, through when it feels uncomfortable and you'll start to reap the benefits of that work and that effort that you're putting in. That's it. Just a little chat I wanted to have with you in this video. Like I said before, if you've had some things that you quit on that you wish you hadn't, how about the things that you wish you hadn't quit on but you did? You know, put that in the comments and. In 2022, we're gonna commit to not quitting. We're gonna dominate in 2022 and we're gonna crush our goals this year. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already subscribed. <sighs> yeah.